This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the Cajun, these two border, the S&P Bud, and the Discord. Can't go wrong with any of those great, great seasons that the Mad Canadian has over at MadCanadianBBQ.com. Again, that is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. While there, be sure to use that promo code SLUTCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Again, that is SLUTCAST10 for 10% off. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a world-class, hand-roasted, micro-roasted, fresh-to-order coffee company based out of near Toledo, Ohio. I'll just say, we'll just go near Toledo, Ohio this ad read. Um, let's, let's hit up some of their flavored coffees. We talk a lot about their unflavored coffees, and they have a ton of unflavored coffees. Let's talk about their flavored coffees. I'm going to go through, I'm just, I'm going to name a bunch of them. And if one of them sounds good, you can find details at ironbeancoffee.com. The Intense Blueberry, the Irish Cream, Dylan's Grog. That's a, it's a classic grog. Um, Mom's Carrot Cake, the Mint Chocolate Chip. Um, that one's sold out. I'm not going to say it. Uh, the Vanilla Butter Cream. The Red Velvet Cake, the Blueberry Cinnamon Crumble. And there's also the ginger snap. Those are a bunch of amazing flavored coffees. Uh, you're supporting a veteran owned company. You're suppo- supporting an integrity based company. You're supporting a Ohio based company when you're supporting iron bean coffee. And you can find those coffees. I'll, I'll talk about some of their unflavored coffees in the next ad read. But you can find those coffees, a lot more coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. It's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? Kyle, it's a lot easier doing ad reads when you only have to do one of the ad reads. <laughs> I like to see I like to see you struggle from time to time, Jared. I um, from time to time. <laughs> Come on now. No, it's good. Good good to um get some new faces on the sleepcast from time to time. Yeah, if you say so. Uh, you know, I, I, Alex was a jerk about it, if we're being honest. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I am just kidding. Alex was fantastic. Yeah, he was. He was. If you haven't checked that out, check out check out last week's episode. Um, where Alex, Alex Gleitman. We're yep, talking. Alex from the Buckeye Scoop came on and um, replaced for me. Um, talked about of the upcoming uh recruit weekend which we're just about to get into here so if you haven't checked them out check out last week's episode it was really good here but let's go ahead let's go ahead and talk about this weekend jared well okay we haven't started the show yet i know and let's start the show okay god you're gone for one week and you completely forget the rhythm of the show we've got barbecue back here you're all invited welcome to the sleepcast how are you doing today kyle I'm all right. I'm here, Jared. <laughs> I'm here. It was a <laughs> long, long drives to and from Ohio. Yeah. But it was good. How about you? How are you doing, Jared? You know, I'm not going to complain. I, I didn't have to drive anywhere. <laughs> Ever since the pandemic start, I very rarely drive any further than Kroger, which is yeah. we, on, like on my, two on red my lights way away. Up, uh, on, my way, on my way up, I uh, stopped to, to see uh, Jared and another friend of ours and went to it went to a restaurant and Jared looks at the table and goes what is, what is this barcode here what is, what is this QR thing here I'm like Jared this is all over the place and Jared, I, the and second, like, I don't get out second second time I have been just trying to follow quarantine rules it was seriously the second time I had been to a restaurant since lockdown started but anyway we're, we're not here to talk about any of that no one cares about my personal life uh Kyle, what we are going to talk about today is recruiting um, we spent two episodes uh, out of the last three episodes talking about the 2022 class. Uh, you and I did uh, a bit of a preview 
um, a bit of a breakdown to some of the guys who are going to be visiting or something. I forget what we did three weeks ago. It was three weeks ago, but I know we we did like a we did like a heavy recruiting episode like three weeks ago. Yeah. Then we talked about some other stuff. And then I had Alex Gleitman on last week and I took my second shot at doing a mock 2022 class. And, um, you know, nothing's official yet. And I'm not I'm not trying to I'm not trying to claim anything's official yet. But if what we're hearing is potentially true, my mock class might be dead before we even get a chance to release this episode. But that's good <laughs> news because it's because Ohio State will be getting someone very talented. Yeah, nope, absolutely. But Jared, um, before we get into that, there's one thing that really caught my eye here that I wanted to talk about. Right I, have before. No, I have no idea what's happening. I, I, I'm scared. I've lost control of the show. From Jim Trestle. Ah, yes. From Jim Trestle. Listen, quoted, listen. and you've probably seen this all over Twitter here. Uh, it says here, I hope I live long enough for the day when when we, meaning Ohio State, are over 500 over the team up north, then I can go to sleep happy. One, it's very dark coming from Jim Trestle. He, we, we don't normally get. We don't normally get those sort of uh, those those sort of thoughts from Jim Trestle. Uh, two, how old is he? How old is Jim Trestle at this point? Because Ohio State can either tie or surpass, I forget, with with six wins. You, you want to guess how old he is? I know, I don't. 68. Yeah. So, I mean, even in a best case scenario, you know, six years is is, you know, a lot of a lot of people go in their 70s. And um, yeah, I think so, too. Gangland gangland says he appear, I mean, he appears to be in good health. We don't we're not his doctor. We don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope so, too. Uh, again, I, the gap, I know the gap is six years, but I can't remember if six years ties or surpasses uh, Michigan. But it would have to be six straight years, obviously. Otherwise, that changes the equation. But the, the gap is six years. They are well, technically it's seven. It's seven. It's 58, 51 and six. Should should have been 58-52 this year. And but some somebody decides to back out. But well, that and well, Jim Tressel did cost us one of those victories later. Yeah, there's that. But I mean, I mean, for how <laughs> no gangland, I don't expect to lose in that span, but it's it's football. Things happen. Yep. Ohio State realistically shouldn't lose in that span. But no, they also realistically shouldn't have lost to Purdue or Iowa or some of the other teams that they've lost to over the past couple of years. It's football. Things happen. So if Ohio State remains perfect against Michigan, they could tie the Wolverines in 2027 and then pass as early as 2028. But I, I was I was all on board. I was all on board with you, Jared. Be like before the season started, like, you know what? Let's just play Michigan every game, every yeah. weekend. Yeah. Let's, let's get that closer. Let's get that closer to that over 500 mark there. Yes. All right, Kyle, Kyle recruiting. We got, we got to start the show, man. We got to start the show. All right, recruiting, Jared. All right. So like I said, we spent a lot of time over the past uh, three episodes talking about the 2022 class. And I there's going to be some big news coming out of the 2022 class, potentially not just this week, but like that Kyle and I aren't aware of yet, but you as Buckeye fans might be aware of, because I really feel like we're Kyle and I are going to miss a commitment. This is how good I feel right now about how this weekend has gone for Ohio state. Um, I feel like there's a commitment or two looming and that Kyle and I are just unaware of it at this time. So hopefully that proves true. I'm constantly hitting F5, Jared. Yes. <laughs> Every Ohio State fan's F5 key is worn the hell out at this point. But Kyle, we're talking 2023. That's what we're doing this episode. Because not only did Ohio State have a ton of 2022 kids come in for the June 4th weekend, they also had a huge camp of players. Not all 2023. There were some 2022 kids in there as well. But a ton of 2023 camp. Uh, kids join the camp for the June 2nd camp. 
guys, we're we're back. Right, recruiting's back. Like recruiting has been oh, because Kyle, how long have you and I been sitting around saying, well, when visits start again, when visits start again? Oh, you know, when visits start again, visits are here. Yep, here we are. Here we are. So what better time than to preview not the current class, but the next class, the 2023 recruiting class. Uh, I'm even I am not crazy enough to try and mock this yet. That That's not happening. We're just going to go through some targets. Um, Kyle, let's let's start with everyone's favorite position, the quarterback. Of course, the quarterback. I mean, it's not like that. We're short of quarterbacks right now, though. <laughs> but well, and, had and a, that's had a, a great. But no, Kyle, that's a great point. With Quinn Ewers, who everyone is projecting as the next, pick, pick your name here, the next can't miss guy. Can you convince a highly touted quarterback to join one year after the next coming? You know, Dante Moore, for example, uh, was a guy who, uh, Ohio State is looking at. He's interested in Ohio State. Ohio State's interested in him. Mm -hmm. Does he actually commit to Ohio State? I have a hard time seeing it. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is a kid. This is a kid out of Detroit, out of the Martin Luther King High School, so uh, right there, right there in Detroit. He's visiting June twenty second. Yep. Who was the kid there with Big Tom? Uh, not sure what you're talking about. Um, we're, we're, we're getting there. We, we're, we're talking quarterbacks. Uh, so that's, you know, he is the number three quarterback in the country. He's out of Detroit. Um, it's a, I, I think it's pretty far fetched at this point. And I think that's just sort of where I leave it. I have a hard time seeing bringing in a five star kid the year after bringing in a five star kid, the year after bringing in a five star kid. It's just, I have a hard time seeing it. All right. So, so who do you see then, Jared? Well, uh, Eli Holstein was a guy who was brought in, uh, who was in for the June 2nd camp and earned an offer. Uh, he's of all the names we're talking about quarterback wise. He's not the highest rated kid. Uh, he's out of the South. So that's always tough to pull a guy out of the South. Um, but I think he's a I think he's a realistic name that that we could be talking about as the next Ohio State Buckeye uh, recruit at quarterback. Um, another guy who I think is at least possible would be Cameron Edge. Uh, Cameron Edge is out of Maryland. Ohio State has a good track record with quarterbacks out of Maryland. That's 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 how I would sell it. Um, but yeah, uh, not not a guy who, again, he's a four star guy. I'm, again, I'm just all I'm saying is, is that they're these guys are good. These guys are very good. I'm not trying to suggest otherwise. I just have a hard time seeing Ohio State bringing in a five star guy. That's all. Um, okay. There's Nicholas and I'm not going to try and pronounce his last name. Um, yeah, I am. I'm going to make a fool of myself, but I'm going to try. Lama Leva. That's that's what I'm going with. Uh, I, I he has Clemson written all over him. He's out of California. Uh, he is family friends with Uwe Angolale. That may have been a good pronunciation. The current Clemson quarterback. Uh, in fact, he showed up to the camp on uh, this week with Ohio State. He showed up to that camp with Uwe Angolale's dad. Okay, thank you, Gangland. Um, so I try and convince me he's not going to Clemson. That that's it. Just try and convince me he's not. Makai Singleton, I think, is another guy. Uh, he's out of Kennesaw, Georgia. I think is another guy who feels a little bit more realistic for Ohio State. So I think right now, if we're looking at the more realistic targets for Ohio State, I'm looking at Malachi Singleton, Cameron Edge, and Eli Holstein. I think you're probably uh, the, the the guys who I'm I'm keeping an eye on for Ohio State. Now, Malachi Singleton, or excuse me, Malachi Singleton uh, was also in for the June second camp, 
And let me check my notes here. June 8th is when Cameron Edge is coming in to visit Ohio State. All right, Kyle, what position you want to go to next? Oh, uh, let's go to let's go to the slobs here, Jared. One of your favorite, you know, it, it is your favorite position here. It's my favorite slob. position. Oh. <laughs> Quarterback is everyone else's favorite position. Offensive line, that's where I run. All right. One of the guys in the June 2nd camp made a big, made a big amount of noise for himself would be Luke Montgomery. Uh, Luke Montgomery uh, is out of Findlay, Ohio. Um, and excuse me. No, he was not in the June 2nd camp. When is he come? Can also wait, what the hell is happening right now? Uh, yeah, I was confusing him with Luke Burgess. All right. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm catching back up now, everyone. But yeah. Uh, great player out of the state of Ohio, out of the Finley area. Um, regardless, uh, he looks like a great talent in state. Uh, Potentially a top 50 overall player in the entire country. So uh, Luke Montgomery, I think, is a great player to keep an eye out on. Could be one of those foundational players that you build a class around. Uh, His name is Luke Burgess. Uh, He is from New Palestine, Indiana. Uh, Not highly rated yet, but apparently turned a ton of heads at the camp. This. This feels like Ohio State getting in early on a guy who's sort of yet unseen. Uh, One of the things Alex and I talked. One of the things Alex and I talked a lot about, not a lot about, but we talked about on last week's show was how far behind the rating services are right now. With a lot of these kids not even getting a chance to play football last year with all of the camps that would have happened during the last year not happening the rating services are really far behind on a lot of guys. Luke Burgess, I think, is one of those guys. Uh, he's only a three star, according to 24 seven sports. According to the composite, he doesn't even have a ranking yet. Uh, number 20 offensive tackle in the entire country, but he's better than all of that. And he proved it at the camp. Uh, I think Ohio State and Luke Burgess. I feel I feel pretty good about this. I'm not doing a mock class for 2023 because, again, that's ridiculous, even by my standards. But if I did, I think I might have Luke Burgess in there. All right. Uh, next up, Tanner Lamaster. He's from Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Um, rating services currently have him listed as a tight end. I think his future is at offensive tackle. And in-state kid, as yet under the radar. I feel like I feel like uh, Ohio State can can make a lot of waves here. Uh, You know, they have trouble recruiting too far out of their footprint with offensive linemen, especially offensive tackles as of late. So here's a talented, underrated kid from Washington Courthouse. I think is another likely candidate for the Ohio State class. Yep, absolutely. Top 10, top 10, currently top 10 recruit based on 24 seven out of the great state of Ohio. Yeah. Kyle, we have another Malachi. I don't know Mm. what was happening uh, 16 or so years ago, but we have another Malachi. Uh, Malachi would uh, complete unknown according to the rating services, but real big kid, real big kid out of Kentucky. Uh, How big is he? Oh, I'm scrolling down here. Yeah, big kid. Six, eight. Sure, he shouldn't be playing tight in there. Six eight, three hundred pounds. Six eight, three hundred pounds. Um, and he's by the way, please, please keep in mind, this is offensive tackle. Six eight, three hundred pounds, out of Kentucky. Class of twenty twenty three. He's a sophomore. Just finishing up his sophomore year. Yes, that is ridiculous. This kid is a sophomore. Well, I I guess he just I guess he's a rising junior at this point since we are in June, but still. Yeah. 
No, and that, that's a question too. Yeah. Like, could he get an extra inch or two as well? I mean, I am, mean, I am, I imagine he's like, you know, an early developer. So probably not, but I don't know. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think I, seven is probably not within the realm of possibilities, but yeah. like Kyle said, an extra inch or two. Yeah. Then you got another kid uh, in Orlando, Florida, uh, Peyton Kirkland, 6'7", 325 as well. Some big to dudes. Keep an eye out for. Those are some big dudes. Uh, rating services aren't quite as far behind on him. Uh, national ranked top 100, top 10 offensive tackle. Um, obviously highly rated. We'll see. Again, Ohio State's had some troubles lately getting these big dudes out of uh, out of. I was about to say the South, but they've had trouble getting these big time offensive tackles, you know, away from the East Coast as well. So it's not just the South. But we'll see. Yep. And anyone else to keep an eye out here, Jared, or should we go to the wide receivers next? Now, nah, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, we can talk wide receivers. Um, one of the first names I want to bring up is an in-state kid named Anthony Brown. Undersized guy, undersized, underrated, uh, currently, quote unquote, just a three star, not not highly rated as of yet, uh, but impressed a lot of people at the June 2nd camp. That says a lot. Uh, can he play? Yes. One of the things I would say holding him back at this point is that it does appear that since we've sort of moved on to the day era away from the Meyer era towards the day era, it does appear that. And and maybe this is a choice they're making and maybe it's not, but it does appear that Ohio state is favoring the bigger target wide receivers over the smaller wide receivers. So does that hamper a kid at five, 10, 170? Not sure, but, but the, I think the thing that you take away from the camp is that there is interest both to and from, and that there's interest to and from, and that he has the talent to, to continue looking, even if Ohio state is into bigger body guys, even if that's what they're now into. Anthony Brown is skilled enough that it's at least making them look twice. Yes. Yep. Uh, Another wide receiver to keep an eye on out of the famed IMG Academy. We have Carnell Tate. Uh, Carnell Tate, uh, originally from the Chicago area, despite the fact that he's going to IMG now, uh, does appear to potentially be a Notre Dame lead uh, lean right now. But gosh, Kyle, we, we like to say that we're early in the process, but we're hyper early in the process of this is the 2023 class uh, once again. So I don't know. Uh, It seems really, really far out to, to say anyone's leaning in any one direction too hard, but here we are. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, all right. Running backs, Jared. Uh, hold on. Did I miss a wide receiver? Uh, Uh, Ethan Davis. Yes. Ethan Davis. Shawnee, Georgia. uh, Georgia, yes. You want to talk about looking for some of those bigger body guys? Again, we're he talking. Has, about, we're talking about a sophomore. Yeah. How big he, is he, Kyle? He has a, he has the size of more of a tight end here. He's six five, two hundred. He could he could be kind of that hybrid tight end wide receiver if you really wanted to there for his size. Yeah, and uh, out of uh, Kentucky, out of Corbin, Kentucky, there's uh, Dakota Patterson who is is being marked as an athlete right now. And uh, also because like, is he a wide receiver? Is he a tight end? So that's, that's another guy who's sort of on that bubble. Um, and then one of the uh, true tight ends that they're targeting right now would be Walker Lyons. Another big dude, 6'5", 230. They're making them big nowadays, Kyle. These kids haven't even started their junior year of high school yet. And look at me when I was in high school, I'm just like a buck 55 and five, nine. 
Yikes. <laughs> All right. Uh, one of the other things that Alex and I were talking about last week was, you know, I did my mock draft and I included two running backs in that mock draft. And he was uh, suggesting that it should only be one. Now, in that frame, I told him, I said, uh, what did I say? Did I say mock draft? I, I keep doing that in my mock class. I know it's not the first time I've done that either, Austin. Uh, in that mock class, I included only one running back or excuse me, I included two running backs. He suggested I should only do one. And one of the reasons why he suggested that was that he felt like Ohio State was in really good position for some real big, talented five star guys in the 2023 class. One of those guys is Richard Young out of Lehigh Acres, Florida. Uh, we're talking about a five star guy, top 20 nationally, the number one running back in the class. Ohio State's in very good position with Richard Young and someone to keep an eye on. Uh, another running back that they have a really great relationship with in. Uh, he's out of Roswell, Georgia. His name is Justice Hayes, which, by the way, can we just get name appreciation? Can we just get name appreciation for Justice Hayes? It's at that that's like straight out of a Western, right? Yeah, Def <laughs> could definitely get down with that. Yeah, it's Jared said another top top running back here out of Georgia, currently in the very early <laughs> recruiting cycle. Number th the third best running back in the country. Uh, Ohio State had has had quite a bit of success in recent years in Georgia, though. Well, you you kind of have to. Georgia has entered itself into that conversation with Florida and Texas and California with, you know, producing talent. You kind of can't. You kind of can't ignore Georgia anymore. Yeah. And also it's Haynes with an N, not Hayes, as in the guy behind me here. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that was actually me pronouncing that correctly for once that it's 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 haynes or did i say it wrong i don't know it's justice haynes <laughs> yeah all right all right jared anything else on the offensive side or should we should we take a break here and hear from our sponsors um yeah uh, i i think I think that's probably good for now on the offensive side. So yeah, let's uh let's take a break and let's let's talk to our sponsors real quick. Am I going first or are you going first? I'll let you I'll let you take a whack out with the Iron Bean Coffee Company, Jared. What the Iron Bean Coffee Company? Did, Kyle, did you know that the Iron Bean Coffee Company is a world class micro roasted fresh to order coffee company? I did. Did you know that they're veteran owned? I did. Is this know your enemy? <laughs> <laughs> are not quite there yet <laughs> all right we talked about some of the flavored coffees in last in the last ad read let's talk about some of the unflavored coffees uh let's take a look at uh the fierce the fierce is a highly caffeinated dark roast uh it is made with 100 specialty coffee coffee beans that give you the edge and confidence to slay your day uh, the taste is smooth, never bitter, with subtle notes of earth and chocolate, low acidity, without taking away from the strength or flavor, 100% natural, no additives, no nonsense. And just like all the other iron bean coffees, it is fair trade certified and USDA organic. Let's see, where can we go next? Let's talk about, um, let's go, let's go to a medium roast this time. We're going to jump over to a medium roast. This is the cast iron. This is one of my personal favorites. Um, he says this one is veteran owned from uh, from from farm to cup, uh, originally roasted by hand in a cast iron skillet. Uh, just like all of our coffee, this one really stood out and still does. Extremely versatile and smooth, rich and clean, fuller bodied, lower acidity. The main tone is going to be a deep semi-sweet chocolate smoke note balanced with just a hint of floral uh this is a hunter uh this honduran is sweet balanced clean coffee with nice spice notes slight 
black pepper, and a little caramel in the lighter roast. How, how can you go wrong with any of this? Uh, and these are just two of the coffees that they currently have uh, for sale in the uh, unflavored coffee batch. You can find those coffees and a lot more coffees. I mean, a lot more coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, not only do they sell great spices, but they also have a food truck, Jared. They do. They do. Uh, and I've heard it's really good. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to meet up with them over the past week, but I, I have I have good, um, I have close people who've had some of his good, food truck good sources. and say that it's really good. Good good sources, very close to the situation. Very, very close. Uh, <laughs> um, check out the check out the Mad Canadian social media pages, either on Twitter or on Facebook, to check out where he and his food truck are going to. Um, lunch, dinner, until they sold out. Uh, <laughs> it's a really, really good food. Um, or if you want to make your own, check out your own spice or make it your own food using his spices. Check out the medcanadianbbq.com where you can find all the great spices that he uses on for all his food in his food truck. Don't know what to get? Why not get one of the box sets that he has there? Uh, the Just Send It is their, um, how do you want to say that, Jared? It's their like all around good, good seasonings. Um, it has a good mix of your basic ones, such as the S&P Bud, got a heat one of the Sonoran Heat. You got a, um, a Tex-Mex style with a Cajun, or you can go with the smoked, or you can go with the sweet heat, which is a mix of a sweet and heat seasonings, or the whole hog, one of each seasonings over at the com, And be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Medkini Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. All right, Kyle, let's jump over to the defensive side of the ball. Where do you want to start on the defensive side? Um, well, let's, let's go with the defensive slobs then, Jared. Let's go with the D linemen. Lots of D linemen to talk about. Um, they're, they're starting off slow with the defensive linemen in the 2022 class. Heck, uh, as far as the 2021 class goes, there's still a guy out there, but they look to be starting out strong 2023, uh, with some of the. Uh, some of the relationships they're already forging along the defensive line. Uh, Kobe Gorman, who had a really nice game, or excuse me, a really nice camp. He was in the June 2nd camp. Um, completely underrated right now, but once again, had a really nice camp. Uh, might be another one of those in-state guys that you develop a really nice relationship with. Um, two big names, two real big defensive line names to, to keep an eye on in this class. Um, one is Amir Herring, and one of the reasons why uh, he is so notable is that he was, in fact, at the June 2nd camp. And one of the reasons why that is so notable is, one, because everyone sort of had him pegged as a Michigan guy. But that Michigan put on a big Detroit camp. For players in the Detroit area specifically, and. Amir Herring is from the Detroit area and he came to Columbus instead. This is obviously uh, it's an early indicator. It's not it's not a commitment. It's not a, it's not signed on the dotted line, but obviously a big deal. You sort of look at. Where you chose, which big camp do you choose to go to and who's putting it on? It's an indicator. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Kyle, who who else might Ohio State be looking to? Uh, not not that Herring was committed to Michigan by any means, but uh, there might be another guy who they're looking to flip. Uh, Amari, um, Amari is twenty twenty two Gangland. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, it gets confusing. It gets it's, it gets confusing. I acknowledge that. Yeah, the the guy that you're talking about here, Jared, uh, is Gabriel Harris out of Georgia. Currently, 
currently um, committed to Florida State's, um, looks like since February here, one of the top defensive line or top 16 in the composite currently, top 100 nationally here. Here's a guy has the built for that defensive line there, 6'4", 237, another kid out of Georgia, as we mentioned a number of times already in this episode. But, but yeah, hard, hard to Florida State right now. So, so what what have what's made you want to bring his name up to talk about then? If it seems to be that he's already commit had a verbal commit, and it seems like all the experts have him going to Florida State. What what about him thinks that he may swap? Well, for one thing, he came to Ohio State. I believe it was on his own dime. I believe it was an unofficial visit. I I need to double check that. And he had a great camp. Uh, There's a lot of mutual interest. Why? Why? It, it, It feels it feels like he's specifically trying to woo Ohio State. And Ohio State has made it clear to him that they will. Now, Ohio State's yet to offer him a scholarship, but Ohio State has made it clear to him that should he decommit from Florida State, they will offer him a scholarship. And I just I have a hard time seeing someone come up from Georgia on their own dime to attend an Ohio State camp. Unless there's interest there, and I'm not saying it's absolute and I'm not saying that it's a done deal. But there's I mean, there's a difference between taking an official visit because Kyle and I've talked about this a thousand times. Why would you not? If why would you not take a paid vacation to a to a camp? Yeah, well, and, and this is and this is the kid. So if anybody who's watched any kind of videos of this stellar defensive end who's just abusing all those offensive linemen, this is that kid. This is that is Gabriel Harris. He's the one that just stood out among everybody on that on that offensive line there. He just abused and got a lot of recognition uh, from uh, from all the Buckeye um, coaches there, especially Larry Johnson. Um, as Jared said, Ohio State would be definitely wanting to give him an offer if they're if he's wanting to decommit. But we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Definitely, definitely a name to keep an eye out for. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we could. I'm not going to, but I feel like we could name this episode. We'll see. Because, again, we're so far out here that it's just sort of like this is just a primer. That's all this is. Getting some names out there. You know, how many of these kids actually end up committing to Ohio State? The number's probably fairly low, but. It's it's, you know, we're just sort of getting some names out there. That's what we're doing here today. Mm -hmm. Um, Another kid from the state of Ohio, specifically mentor Ohio, is Brennan Vernon. Uh, He has some really nice crystal balls, some big name crystal balls, placing him at Ohio State already. Um, This is not like just an in-state kid, though. Uh, we're, We're talking about a top 20 national player. Number two from the state of Ohio in the 2023 class. Ohio's got Ohio is looking to have a really nice 2023 class. Just yeah. as a state, uh, yeah. it, it appears to be a really nice class um, being led in part uh, by Brennan Vernon. Again, defensive lineman from Mentor, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Current, currently, Ohio State has four in that top 81. I'll, I'll, I'll say 81. <laughs> Which is fairly oh. deep for Ohio, especially this early in the cycle. Yeah, that, another kid here. Um, I, I'll just I'll just say it. Who who is currently the number one Ohio kid out of Ohio? Uh, is Sony Styles? I we're not to the defensive backs yet, but yeah, Sony Styles is definitely number one, and it's deserved. But we'll we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Let, let's yeah. let's stick to the defensive line. And let's talk about Joshua Padilla, uh, interior offensive lineman from Dayton, Ohio, from Wayne, a a high school that's produced some Ohio State talent over the years. 
yeah, uh, another another great player. Uh, number four in the number four in the state, according to the composite, placing him one twenty five nationally, Kyle. So that appears to be four in the top one twenty five. Yes. Uh, there's so many defensive linemen they're already doing great with. Uh, there, I'm a. Uh, there's Malik Bryant, who everyone wants. Uh, he's one of the best edge rushers in the class. Uh, John Walker, um, who's a, a really nice defensive lineman from Florida. Uh, Derek LeBlanc is another guy who was, I believe, in and visiting for January 2nd. Uh, no, he was not. That's OK. But he is visiting somewhere. Checking my notes. At some point, checking my notes, almost sure I saw. Yeah, they, oh, he came in for June 4th. So he was in this weekend. He just wasn't in for the June 2nd camp. I knew he was in, damn it. Um, but yeah, that's that's where we're at on the defensive line side. All right, Kyle, not not a ton of linebacker targets yet. Which is surprising for for how how much I- I think everybody thinks that Ohio State needs to put some attention to is that linebacking crew. Well, it's one of the things, again, to go back to the episode that that Alex and I had last week, where they they already have two linebackers in the class. And, you know, I didn't place a third linebacker in my mock class. And Alex was like, man, you really should have a third linebacker in there. And I said, yeah, but who? And yeah, but who? And yep. so that's, you know, where where does Ohio State find said? Oh, my God. Where does Ohio State find said linebacker, I think, is the bigger question. And it, they don't appear to be. Again, we're, we're very super duper early in all of this in the 2022 class, the 2023 class. But, you know, not not a ton of targets along the linebacker, not a ton of mutual interest targets in the linebacker. I only have one name in here right now. Uh, his name is Troy Bowles. Uh, he is out of Tampa, Florida, uh, just outside the top 100 nationally. If you're looking at the 24-7 sports composite, just inside if you're just looking at the 24-7 sports proper rankings. And it all, I should probably also point out that um, Malik Bryant, who, again, is that great edge rusher who I already mentioned. Some people are also looking at him at linebacker. So maybe Malik Bryant is. Is not a defensive end. Maybe he's more of a linebacker. It probably depends upon your scheme. But Ohio State does have a tendency. Not a tendency. It's a, it's a policy at this point to put their good edge rushers at defensive end. So even though a lot of people are looking at Malik Bryant, linebacker, defensive end, defensive end, linebacker, I have a hard time seeing him play linebacker at Ohio State, in Ohio State scheme at the next level, personally. Mm-hmm. Now, he's certainly a, a defensive end who could stand up and move around if you needed him to, but I, I, I see him as a defensive end in Ohio State scheme. Got it. Got it, got it. All right, defensive backs, Jared. Now you can talk about him. Mentioned about Tony Styles, the, like, no question, he's like the best, best kid out of Ohio right now, out of Pickering, Pickerington Central. Uh, Still really early on. Um, There's, can't really say who he's favoring and all that, but obviously Ohio State's still in, in the match there being, being a kid out of Ohio, um, some other kids to keep an eye out for on the defensive backs is uh, Christian Gray out of uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Another kid out of St. Louis. Um, we mentioned a number of times, it seems like that that city is kind of another hub for Ohio State to kind of go after and look for some great talent. He, had, here's a, here, he and here, Sonny, here. he and Sonny both had great camps June, uh, mm-hmm. June 2nd. Yep. Um, a, a couple additional notes on Sonny Styles, Kyle. Mm-hmm. One, uh, he is teammates with the defensive lineman who I named earlier named Kobe Gorman. They're both pick central kids. If you don't know, if you're not familiar with the Columbus area, Pickerington is a uh, Ohio suburb just east of the city. So th- those are 
in town kids. Those are pick central kids. Um, Pickerington is the city that produced all of the Bourne brothers. If you remember, uh, pick central's put, although I don't remember if they were pick central or pick north, but out of Pickerington, regardless. Um, yep. And I should note, since I noted that uh, Derek LeBlanc, or excuse me, not Jared, uh, Malik Bryant could, you know, Ohio State's looking at as a defensive end, might be a linebacker. Sonny Styles being looked at as a safety, but could also be a linebacker. Uh, he is big enough, currently 6'4", 205, to move down and play linebacker. You know, you see him as like prototypical if Ohio State really decided to commit to that bullet position, seems like a real prototypical bullet position type player. Absolutely, yes. But yeah, bo yep. both he and Christian Gray had great camps June second. Yep don't don't pay too much attention with the rankings currently with Christian Gray is better than what what it says right now. It, all, all of the ranking services are super far behind right now. You have to yep. understand that. They spent their sophomore year in lockdown. There aren't a lot of camps for kids who are rising sophomores. Heck, I mean, there, there's there's kids kind of there's kids out there just like just like a potential house state starter at running back who didn't even have a senior year. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Uh, the last last kid to keep an eye out for out of uh, on our defensive backs here is a. It's a guy named Kayan Lee out of Ellenwood, Georgia. Here we go again, Jared. George, another another kid out of Georgia here. One of the best um, corners for that 2023 class. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have some athletes to, to go over here. Some guys who are not 100% sure quite where they're playing yet. Um, Jonel Agreo, I apologize. I'm sure I'm messing that name up. Uh, another IMG kid. And uh, Taewon Webb. Um, he's another Florida kid, although he's out of uh, Trinity Christian, which is almost as big of a producer as IMG. Uh, definitely a huge school. Uh, I, this guy, is he's just an athlete. Like, when they just when the recruiting services just sort of said he's an athlete, why? He, why do you want him to play defensive back? You want him to play wide receiver? What do you want him to do? He'll go do it. Um, that's absolutely the case with Webb. Uh, amazing talent just outside the uh, the top 30 or just inside the top 30, depending on which recruiting service you're looking at. Um, athlete in the truest sense of the word. All right, Kyle, um, do you have any additional 2023 names you want to throw out there? Um, I, if anyone who's currently down in our chat room, uh, by the way, uh, Julio Jones just, just signed with the Titans, apparently, according to Gangland. Um, any 2023 questions, you guys, anyone down in the notes have that you might want to throw out there? Or uh, should we move on to the regular? Well, we can move on to the regular Ask Slugcast questions. And if anyone down there wants to ask us any additional questions, uh, feel free. But Kyle, yep. let's move on to our Ask Slugcast questions. Yep, absolutely. All right. Uh, first question from Stuart, E4 US vet. With American football becoming more popular globally, will we see Ohio State get any position other than kicker from abroad? Is it? No, I mean, on, honest question, is it like I think Germany kind of likes American football. I think Japan kind of likes Japan does Yep, American football. Um, I've I've not seen it. Um, there's every once in a while you'll see a kid from Canada come down and play. Uh, other than that, I've I've not I've not seen it to this point. So, uh, no. I mean, there's always specialists because soccer is huge everywhere. So I know Australia is huge as far as like putting punters and kickers into the league. Um, but I I just don't. Yeah, no, I'm just I'm just going to say no. 
outside yeah, of I, the specialist, I don't see it happening. No, I, I don't. I don't see it at, at this point either. Uh, Kabuto, June will be crazy with visits. Yeah. Yes. But will July be more exciting and interesting to us as fans because of actual 2022 commitments? I don't know why you think you got to wait till July for commitments. Kyle and I are petrified right now that our show is becoming instantly dated by the potential of players committing. Uh, I think commitments are that imminent. Uh, So, no, I think we're going to get plenty of commitments this month. Uh, There's going to be tons of commitments for Ohio State this month. I'll go ahead and say it. Yeah, I see. I see a great picture by um, um, Jair Brown, who's a already a verbal commitment for um, the twenty twenty two class for Ohio State. Finally, getting to meet his coach, Coach Combs, and it has made that his uh, profile picture there. <laughs> Gangland just asked us down in the live chat. Um, I don't see the Buckeyes taking the risk, but what happened to the Aussie O lineman that Michigan took? I have no idea. Uh, uh, if it's anything like the rest of Michigan's team, they've probably transferred. Kyle, 21 since I think it was last August or September, whenever the whenever the 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 clock switches over for the transfer portal. Yep. 21 players have left Michigan via the That's transfer portal. Higher recruiting class. I mean, I mean, it's not all, but yeah, it's, that's, it's the numerical equivalent of a recruiting class. That is. Well, listen to a few weeks ago when we talked about teams that need to get over that hump and what you, Michigan needs to do there. You, you, so you can't continue on with Harbaugh. You simply no. can't continue on with Harbaugh if you're Michigan. You can't lose 21 players. And by the way, were some of them up to Big Ten quality? Yeah. Were all of them? No. Not some of those players. You can look to see where they're transferring to get an idea. But some of those players were. Of Big Ten quality. Yeah. I mean, heck, you had one that went to Tennessee. Out of the frying pan into the fire on that one, as far as I'm concerned. But yeah. All right. Um, Buckeye Jared. Not me. Not you. Uh, which player do you do you guys think will be rocking the block at zero this year? I feel like we've had this conversation a couple of times. Um, I'm still going Haskell Garrett. That That's I, still my dude. Pretty- Hundred percent. Yeah, I, I that's that is my betting odds would be would be Garrett there. Uh, I would also say on the offensive side, it could very much. Oh, uh, Gangland says that he decommitted from Michigan and went to Minnesota. Probably a wise choice. <laughs> so he didn't transfer. He didn't even get a chance to. Yeah, because I was I'm like, I was like looking at who else could be number zero. Who else? I don't think I don't think Olave or Wilson would. Olave would be a great candidate for it, but but the CO two though. So but CO2. he's very he he's already changed his not he already changed his number last year. Of course, you could still be COO, and that's still technically CO two. Yeah, ex- thank you, Gangland. No, yeah, Gangland no, said you're, it as you're well. right. It could be. It's it could still be. it's still technically CO two yeah. because it's COO. Yeah. Um, a guy who I would, you can't do it cause he's an offensive lineman, but I think Thayer Munford would be a great candidate, but, uh, rules don't allow for an offensive lineman to wear zero. I don't believe. So that's unfortunately you know not who a possibility, else, you know, but he would be a great candidate for it. You know who else could be? I, I don't think he'd be a good candidate, but I would like to see, get, get a, get a tight end to wear number zero there. Jeremy Rucker. I, I don't think that's outside. No, I, I think that's totally within the realm of possibilities that it could be Jeremy Ruckert. Um, but if I had to pick one, I'm still going Haskell Garrett. Now, if you did like offense and defense. I think Olave is my first choice, but again, does he want to? But uh, even that aside, like if I just get to be a dictator about it, I'm doing one mm-hmm. on offense, I'm doing one on defense, I'm doing Haskell Garrett and CO2. Yep. 
All right, Jared Gangland, who's also in our um, in our studio here with us. Do you think Columbus getting Bojangles increases our hit rate on higher ranked recruits from the South? Columbus is getting Bojangles. Is that a thing? Are we getting a Bojangles know. gangland? Where is it going to be? Because five of them. Five of them. Oh, my goodness. I, OK, so if we're getting five of them, I have to assume one's going to be on campus. Yeah, got to be on campus. I'm yeah. sure I'm sure it's. It's just the type of thing that needs to be on campus. Well, it's also it's a marketing strategy to put stuff on campus so that kids then come to Ohio State from the state, leave, go back home and and tell everyone how great the thing is. So it's a marketing strategy to target to target college students for that reason. Um, It's a good way of creating like word of mouth advertising. The fast food chain, which is known for its Southern comfort food, plans to open 15 stores in the Columbus area. 15, gangland. Maybe only they five. They open 45 restaurants throughout the South and the Midwest. My goodness. Maybe. The answer to your question, maybe, but it won't, it won't, it won't be the, the, the determining factor. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Buckeye it Zach. It can't hurt. Gangland. Yeah. It can't hurt. Better than better than those McDonald bags, right? <laughs> uh, 15 is game changing. Did they Buckeye, buy someone out? How do they? I don't know. I don't know. That's that's ambitious. I'm it just going to say that's ambitious. Uh, Buckeye Zach says, is LeBron finally... In what other to... city can you get both Tim Hortons, a Canadian food, and southern. Bojangles, a southern food? I dare you to find any other city where you can get both where you can get both Bojangles and Tim Hortons. Maybe, maybe Virginia. How dare you? There's no, okay. there's no, there's no way Tim Hortons is in Virginia. No, it's not a possibility. Don't even look right. it up. All right. Buckeye Zach, is LeBron finally going to just give up and move on after being defeated by the Suns? I I doubt it, but he's up there in age now. I don't I think this was the first year in which I had to sort of say, Yeah, LeBron's old now. Like I don't yeah. feel like I ever had to say that before, but it it, it does feel as though LeBron's old now. He's not healing from his injuries properly. He's running out of gas. Um, he's old now. And you can still be old and great, but things you you can't you can't completely put the team on your back and dominate a game for 40 minutes. And yeah. you can't come back from injuries so quickly. And it's uh Yeah, exactly, Gangland. Um yep, exactly. All right, Sun Card. Um, what information will you use as a fan over the next three to five years to assess if the person chosen to be the starting quarterback this fall was the right choice? What? <laughs> what information will you use, will to, you add, use to assess at- a quarterback? Um, over the next three to five years, if, the, if it was the right choice. For them to to start or play at a, at Ohio State. I wonder if this is all derived from like, did Urban make the right choice with Haskins and Burrow? Like now that we're three to five years out from that choice, mm-hmm. like does the fact that Burrow looks to be a better pro so far change anything? Does the fact that Burrow won a championship at LSU change anything? The fact that he was the first overall pick, you know. Do you use those things as evidence? Is it fair to use those things as evidence to say that Urban, quote unquote, made the wrong choice? And I would point out that Burroughs first year at LSU wasn't fantastic. I mean, I'm not saying he was bad, but he definitely made a big leap from his first LSU year to his second LSU year. And I think a lot of that has to do with coaching more so than it does specifically Joe Burrow. But some of it has to do with Joe Burrow. Uh, 
he was coming. Yeah, exactly. Um, Joe Brady made a huge difference there. Um, so yeah, it's how do you assess it? Can you ever assess Urban's decision between Haskins and and Burrow fairly? And the answer to that is no. Like you simply can't because you just don't you just don't know. We can theorize, we can debate, we can argue about it, and we can have a lot of fun doing so. But you just don't know what what does Ohio State's season look like if Urban had said to Joe Burrow, you're the starter. What does that look like? What does it look like if Ohio State had gone with JT Barrett from game one in 2016, 2015? What does that look like? You just never know. And whoever ends up winning this quarterback battle, I mean, they're foreseeably, Kyle McCord's amazing. Can we just say that? Five-star, top 20 quarterback, absolutely amazing. There exists a real decent chance he never starts at Ohio State. Because CJ Shroud is also amazing. Because Quinn Ewers is also amazing. And it's possible that there's just not a medium ground, a medium time in space in which Kyle McCord gets to start. Does that mean Ohio State is wrong if they never start him? Even if Kyle McCord then goes on to another school and plays tremendously, does that mean that Ohio State was wrong simply because the player had success, success elsewhere? And the answer is, I don't know. Like you, you can't argue something when you don't have the counterfactual. And as, whether you're talking about JT Barrett or Joe Burrow or, you know, the current quarterback situation, you will never have the counterfactual. You just won't. Yep. Yeah, you, you can't really compare. There's just too many factors to really determine. But I guess if, if you're looking at Ohio State, it's did you lose to Michigan? Did you win a Big Ten championship? And did you get a chance to make it to the playoffs there? I feel like that's so bare minimum at this point. Like, if you're talking about like had had they gone with Dwayne Haskins and Dwayne Haskins completely flubbed up the entire season, you don't make the playoffs, you don't win the Big Ten, you don't beat Michigan, then you can say, yeah, Ohio State messed up and should have gone with Joe Burrow. Okay, but that's such an extreme that, you know, because the real question is, the real question is, had it been Joe Burrow instead of Haskins, does Ohio State win a national title? Because that was the one thing Haskins left on the table. It was. Yep. It was. What? And here's the other thing. If it's Joe Burrow instead of Haskins, do you get Justin Fields? Because th there exists a possibility through a chain of events that you never know. You simply don't have the crystal ball. You simply can't see the counterfactual, you know, butterflies and hurricanes and all that crap. You simply never know. Mm -hmm. Sun Carter also asks, what kind of water do you drink? <laughs> yeah. Filtered. <laughs> yes. Filtered water. Filtered and chilled. I, 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 or, chilled or one with hops and barley in it. Hops and barley. Kyle, do you know beer is technically a tea? Hmm. Interesting. It's, it's a hop and barley tea. Interesting. I, I All right. Anything else, Jared? Why I felt we are, like that we was are, relevant. No, let's end the episode. Uh, As always, always, we are over on time here, but you got any less? We're pretty under as far as over goes, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, visit the sloopcast.com. If you go to the sloopcast.com, there is links to all of our other stuff. You can buy t-shirts there. This is my DBU shirt, a shirt that has surprisingly gone unclaimed by Ohio state 
to this point. If you like any of our shirts at merch.thesloopcast.com, please God buy them because Ohio State just takes stuff down, even if it has no relevance to their trademarks whatsoever. And our T-shirt distributor are a bunch of cowards. And they we had a thing that was a Ninja Turtle spoof. I think I re-uploaded it, so I think you can still buy it, at least for the time being. It was a Ninja Turtle spoof. It didn't. It's the only it said like the Buckeye Sloopcast on it. So it did have the word Buckeye, but it didn't say Buckeye football. And like you don't own the effing trees, Ohio State. You don't own the trees. You don't own the trees, Ohio State. Point is, is that if you like any of our stuff, even if it looks like it's trademark proof, assume nothing. Mm -hmm. So go, 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 go buy, go buy some t-shirts. Yep. Yeah. I, I didn't mention one, one of those pictures there. Yeah. Jair Brown. Yeah. Enjoying his time with his new coach there. Yeah. Uh, this is a big weekend for Ohio state and you to jump into 2022 real quick. It's a real big weekend for Jair Brown and Ohio State. Uh, he's openly flirting with Notre Dame. He's basically decommitted at this point, even though he's not officially decommitted at this point. Uh, so it's kind of like Ohio State and Notre Dame are in his final two, even mm -hmm. though he's technically committed at this point. Yep. Uh, but yeah, that's so go visit the sloopcast.com. Um, Make sure to join our Patreon site. If if uh, one of the things I want to point out, we want to make this show during the football season, a everyday show. Uh, we have a goal out there that you can go and contribute to through Patreon. And if we reach that goal, we will do this episode five days a week during the football season. Um, it's a thing Kyle and I want to do for sure, but it's also a huge time investment, obviously. And we kind of, we need to be able to justify the amount of time we're going to spend on it with money, quite frankly. So uh, consider doing that. If you like the show, if you want more from the show, please consider going to patreon.com. You can contribute for as low as $1 a month, uh, but you start to get benefits at $3 a month. And that includes like, you know, we had Gangland and Austin and I think someone else down in here okay. chatting during the course of the show. It's you okay. can join them. Uh, you, you can join them with the uh, they're they're watching right now. Um, I don't care. Uh, I don't I don't I don't care. I'm not giving. Uh, sorry, Gangland asks who wins tonight between Mayweather and the Paul kid. And I don't care. I. The, the those two brothers whose name I'm not going to say again, uh, they want attention and I refuse to give it to them. That's it. That's 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 the tweet. Um, so, yeah, uh, help help us out on Patreon and uh, our homie Sun Card, who is one of the moderators in the Discord server, is putting together a trivia night. And if you want details on that trivia night, because um, I don't think we have the, tr the details yet, uh, but uh, join the Discord. And it's will be open, I think, to everyone in the Discord. It won't be open to just uh, the the premium members, and you get, you become a premium member via the Patreon. That's what that three dollars or more a month gets you. I think it'll be open to all of the members of the Discord, and if you you can join the Discord for free, there's plenty of free channels. There's lots and lots of people in the Discord who aren't paying members, and so you don't you don't have to contribute any money to to enjoy the discord server and you can join that uh, discord is just an app you can download on your phone and you can go to discord.thesloopcast.com and and join and that's a great way to have conversations with kyle and i uh if that's a thing you're interested in uh kyle that was a lot i'm i'm done uh do you have anything in kyle's corner the crew jared mm -hmm. the crew is two and oh since since they have now officially been called back to the Columbus crew. Is that a coincidence? No, I think not. Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, the vibes, Kyle. The vibes. The vibes, yeah. Justin Fields. Oh, can I Justin get one more crew Fields. note in there? Can I get one more crew note? 
mm-hmm. uh, when they opened the new stadium. Full capacity. That's right. Full. We're going full capacity. Yeah. Looking, Joining. looking forward to seeing that, that new stadium fully packed in black and gold there. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think we, we say yellow. Black and gold is what the Pittsburgh cities say. Uh, so the Reds, the Indians, and now the crew are all going full capacity. I'm just saying it's probably a good indicator for what Ohio State plans on doing. Exactly. Yep. Penn State has announced full capacity for the season. I feel like mm-hmm. it's really just a matter of time before Ohio State says the same. It is. Uh, Justin Fields getting a lot of good publicity uh, for things he's doing and saying uh, recently for the fans in Chicago. Um, he's looking very impressive on the field, saying the right things to the media. I think he had, um, I think he had a comp, he had a conversation with a coach saying, um, "Who who is your center? Uh, um, what great or what what year is he graduating? Oh, he did. Where did he get drafted?" The <laughs> and then Justin team. Fields says, "The the wrong team." <laughs> and he said, "Who is that? <laughs> what team is that?" And he said, "The Packers." Yeah. <laughs> Getting a lot, a lot, getting a lot of um, fan favorites already. So, best of luck to him as he continues on with his NFL career. Is that um, it? I think that is it. I'm doing a quick <laughs> F5. Go, on... go to BuckeyeScoop.com. Do an F5. Yep, I'm doing. I'm doing it all on Buckeye Scoop on Twitter. Um, no, I think. I think that is it until we stop hit record, Jared. Yeah, the second the second we hit stop, it someone will commit. I, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, All right, let's, let's end the show here, Jared. Yeah, let's end the show. Uh, yeah. Uh, tonight's ending music we brought to you by a Cincinnati-based band. They are called Mother Folk. Uh, I'm highlighting them this week because they just announced a tour. Kyle, touring music is happening again. They have date. They have dates in Cincinnati, in Cleveland, and in Columbus. Uh, I think their Columbus date is technically in Bexley, but you know, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, so yeah, uh, they but they're all going all over the Midwest. I think uh, I don't have their tour dates up in front of me, but I know they have three dates in in Ohio, um, and then just I think they're going at least as far away as Chicago. They're hitting up a bunch of dates. So um, if you like this song and you want to check it out. Uh, and like I said, they're they're touring outside of Ohio. Uh, so if you live in the general Ohio region of the country, uh, maybe check out their web page and, and see if they're coming to a show near you. And uh, they're great live. They're fantastic live. Tons of energy. I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, and uh, so like I said, go, go ahead and check out those those tour dates uh, via quick Google. It's just mother folk. It's one word. Uh, the name of this song is F U S the initials F U S and yeah, I think that's it. So that, that is the name of this song. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is mother folk. You think there's, uh, I'll ask you that off of, I want to ask you that while we're recording. All right. All right. Well, it had to do with Mother Folk. So you probably see where I was may have okay. been going with that. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. Probably, the is probably no. <laughs> uh, Why? Well, you don't know how I was going to frame the question, but <laughs> let's, let's quit being cryptic. Um, yeah. Uh, everyone, I'm, I'm glad you... Uh, if you're not into recruiting, I'm sorry for this episode. I know it was just us talking about a lot of names you've never heard before. If you are into recruiting, um, congrats. I guess this episode was for you. Um, I'm still waiting. I'm still hitting the F5 here. Yeah, waiting hitting for that F5. Keep hitting that F5, Kyle. This particular, this particular recruit here. Who's on? Who's a borderline five star? <laughs> is he? Is he from the West Coast? Uh, I actually forget where he's from. <laughs> I actually forget where he's from. But um, I'll say that there's a 2022 kid who I 
after this weekend, I feel like is likely to commit. Um, and that he's not in my mock, which means my mock will have lasted less than a week. <laughs> uh, he is West Coast. Yeah. Well, not. He is West. I don't does know he, West. Does he go to a does he go to a, a magnet school for talent in the Nevada area? Yes, that is him. Does does is that the same high school as a certain quarterback once played for? <laughs> it is. Uh played for is um not the right <laughs> wording, but no, no, he did play for them. He just never played for Ohio State. Yeah. Just so we're yeah. clear. Yep, I'm still still waiting for that. But all right, all right. All right. Let's end the episode here, Jared. <laughs> we gave enough clues there that everyone knows exactly who and what we're talking about. But yeah, let's end the episode. Once again, would like to thank Motherfolk for ending today's show. Um, once again, would like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. Who are the Iron Bean Coffee Company? The Iron Bean Coffee Company are a world-class micro roaster. All of your beans are fresh roasted to order. They're not sitting around in a warehouse or in the back of a grocery store or in the truck just aging and losing flavor. No, these, these are not roasted until you order them, and then they are shipped directly to you. Uh, once again, they're out of Perrysburg, Ohio, which is near Toledo. Uh, all of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA certified organic. Um, this is an integrity based company. They do all of the things right. And not only does doing the thing, not only is that just good for the earth and good for humanity and good for everything else by doing these things right. But as an amazing little added benefit, it makes the coffee better. <laughs> it does also make the coffee better and you know it's why 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 would you not if you had a chance to get the best possible coffee support a marine owned company support an ohio based company support a company that supports the people who are down the supply chain and treats them as humans and does everything right why would you not why, why would you why would you buy an, another giant tub of Folgers? You deserve better. You deserve better than Folgers, you guys. You deserve better. And by the way, you deserve better than Starbucks. Can we talk about Starbucks? Starbucks sucks. Listen, let's not let's not and say you did, Jared. Starbucks is just snooty McDonald's. There, I said it. There is no difference in my mind between Starbucks and McDonald's. None. They're the same place except McDonald's has better coffee. There, I said it. McDonald's has better coffee than Starbucks. But you know who has better coffee than both of them is the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, you can find your very own coffee at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Don't let that name fool you. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company? Nope. It is an Ohio-based company. Right here in your own backyard. That North, air fries everything. Northwest Ohio. It's not true. Up, up by Finley, Ohio. Great seasonings we've mentioned for a year and a half now and still holds true today. Uh, some, of, some of our favorites, Jared. I'll, I'll name two. You name two. Two, two, two of my favorites here. Yep, I'm going, I'm going to get you involved here. Jared's eyes are opening here. Um, Carrie Steak. It was, it was my first seasoning I've tried out uh, over at the Mad Canadian. My parents love that too. They put that, they put that on their burgers. Um, I may, I put that as well as the, um, the Sonoran Heat. Made some burgers while I was up in Ohio. Put some, made, made half, three quarters of the burgers. Carrie Steak. The other quarter, a little, something a little spicy. Put some Sonoran heat on that. Put some pepper jack cheese on that. Mm, great, great, great burger right there. Those, those are two of my favorite seasonings over, over at the MadKinneyBBQ.com. What are two of your favorites, Jared? You have to go with the S&P, bud. Like, you, you just have to. It's a staple. Um, it's an instant upgrade to anything that is a potato. I call it my potato cheat code. And that's everything from mashed potatoes and baked potatoes to French fries 
Uh, if it was ever made of a potato, then the S&P bud will make it better. Of course, the S&P bud will make anything better. Like if you're just doing like a, if you're trying to eat healthy and you got just like a, uh, like a, uh, a vegetable medley going on, eh, it's not that great, right? Cause it's, it's vegetables. It's not throw some S&P bud on there. And all of a sudden, and a little bit of butter, if we're being honest. And all of a sudden, it's now magical. That frozen bag of vegetable medley just became amazing, thanks to the S&P bud. And uh, I'm going to have two for my second one, Kyle. I'm going to have to say the Four Horsemen slash the Discord. I'm going to have to do both of them. They are both a spicy four pepper blend. The Discord has a sweet base. The Four Horsemen has a saltier base. But as far as it being spicy, they're they're pretty much both like equal and incredibly spicy. Kyle talked about the Sonoran Heat. The Sonoran Heat is a little it's a little bit spicy. You had a little bit of spice in there. Four Horsemen in the Discord. That's a lot of spice. That that that'll punch you if you're not ready for it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that as my two and a half favorites. All right. Awesome. Cool. There's, there's seasonings for everybody there. They're up to 14, I think, maybe more, at least 14, at 14. least 14 uh, great seasonings over at Mackinney, BBQ. More coming. Um, more coming. Yep. Absolutely. That, that mad lab is always open. Um, be sure to use that promo code sloopcast 10 at checkout sloopcast one zero for 10% off your entire order. Mackinney barbecue company where they have your butt covered. 